bananas. And I thought no one could do that to you, Joe. Are you kidding? <laughs> I go bananas all the time. Three-point shot by Freddy Uvalde. Won't go. We're ten seconds into the second quarter. Still a 12-point lead for the coffee makers. That rebound by Michael Young typifies what they did in the first quarter. They had 20 rebounds. And why only eight? They shot 52% from the floor. And why only 43%? Ray Tays had more assists. Six to five. Turnovers, they're all square at three. Top of the key shot by Michael Young won't go, and this has opened up a new opportunity for Tantuai to mount a rally. Here is David Sturgill. Oh, a heartbreaker for David Sturgill. Sturgill out. Arnie bought this, and look at him as well. Really tried to stop Arnie. Succeeded in intimidating him. Philip Cesar is looking for Michael Young. There's the alley oop. Oh, oh <laughs> how about that? Did you see that? Yes. It was intended yes. as an alley oop. Pass, but right. it went in. I so hope credit two points to Philip Cesar. Right. He's only 33 points away from the 10,000 plateau. Right. I hope our director got that slow mo. We'll show that to you later on. What Wait. a. You know, I think Lady Luck is going to play a big role in the outcome of this ball game. In the meantime, Lady Luck Look. rode the shoulders of the Let's watch this. Watch the slow mo. Philip telling Michael, I'll give you the alley oop. He throws it in and watch it go into the basket. <laughs> and Michael Young told him, That's supposed to be my basket, you know? 38 25. Paul on de la Cruz. Only his first personal, likewise the first team foul for Tantuai in the second quarter. Great taste is still clean. Ricky Brown, hugging the limelight. This is one of the key players of the great taste coffee makers, and that is even an understatement. So far, he scored only four points for his team's cause, but there's really no need for him to start exploding with Alan K. Dick taking care of the outside artillery. Now he can concentrate on dishing out those assists. That's right, Alan K. Dick has 13 points. The ball game, Wadness has got eight. Scoreboard reads 39 for Great Chase, 25 for the Rum Makers. A very tight pass inside, heavy traffic. Juan Fernandez comes through. Okay, that time they played it very intelligently because the double team was thrown on third kill. Good rotation by the men of San Juan, and they got the basket inside. Ricky Brown confronted by Onji de la Cruz. You know, they're really trying to set up those picks for Ricky Brown because Onji de la Cruz has proven to be a very tough defensive customer for Ricky Brown. Uh-huh. Unproductive pass by Great Taste. 12-point lead for Great Taste. No longer. It's just a 10-point markup. Exactly 10 minutes to go before the halftime break. 39-29 are the exact figures on the scoreboard. Philip Cesar, they're stepping down to a half court. Of course, you realize that the reason why the fast break worked so well for Great Taste in the first quarter is because of their tremendous domination of the boards. And what happened there? Michael Young got an offensive foul his first... And Ricky Brown is getting some relief from Bernie Fabiosa. Let's see if this guy's hand is in good working order. He had 12 stitches there as a result yeah. of an injury, right? Say the Sultan of, of Thief. <laughs> the Sultan of Swipe, yes. Of Swipe. And the Thief of Baghdad. Good drop. Right. And a great Thief. shot coming from Monchi. Again, that rotation inside the paint. Huh? So they're giving up the passes and getting a lot of assists now going for them. And Tandwai has finally broken past the double-digit barrier, down by just eight points. And Alan Kaide quick, quickly gives. <laughs> it was even a three-point shot. A double-digit advantage anew for the Great Taste Coffee Makers. And how quickly the five uh, coffee makers on defense against third kill. Well, for whatever it's worth, we'd like to mention that what you're watching here is a contest between two frustrated Grand Slam winners. Tandwai failed to pull the feet last year, and a year earlier than that, the Great Taste was also denied. Kaidik. Yes. Oh boy, he's burning. Another three point shot by Kaidik, and they've got a 14 point lead. Two birdies in a row by Alan Kaidik immediately squelched the Tandwai rally. 8.44 to go. Second quarter action. On the fall away by Mon Fernandez of Philip Cesar, and he succeeds. Despite the good defense put up by Philip Cesar, Mon gets his two points. Still a dozen point lead though for the Great Taste Coffee Makers, looking to level the series at one all. You know, there's really a lot of speculation as to how far this series will go, but the consensus seems to be six or seven games. Uh -huh. Your guess was seven games, I remember that very well. Right then. Here is Freddy Humaldi. Yes. What a great consummation of a fast break. It was almost going down the drain when he suddenly pulled it out of the fire. And what was sweet for him was he took that shot off two Coffee Makers. You know, the savvy and experience of the grizzled veterans on the floor will probably be a significant factor in the outcome of not only this ball game, but of the entire series as well. And you can count on a lot of pioneers 
on that floor right now. Michael Young. Yes, off the glass. So uh, the Great Days Coffee Makers, Joe, are wrapping it up also with the Ramp Makers. I think that's what the Ramp Makers did to them in the first game. So they're playing rugged defense still, huh? 47-35. Oh, very tight pass oh. inside. Onchi de la Cruz once again. This guy has to be contained because he's been the recipient of a lot of those brilliant assists. Brandy Papioza says he wants a spread out offense. Alan Kaidi. They're going to the hot shot. You know, a very avid fan of the PPA wrote us to ask us to give him the nickname of Alas. Alas. Alas is the Tagalog word for ace. And he really is an ace up the sleeves of Baby Dalupa. <laughs> so 49-37 is the count. David Thurgill's drive draws a foul from Alan Kaidik. From Alas. No foul. I think it's Michael Young. Yeah. Michael Young gets his second personal foul. And here comes Ramos. Oh, this guy is tough. Look at those broad shoulders. But an equally tough, probably even tougher hombre has just reported for duty. And this is Magnum Forrest himself in the person of Rambo. Juan Fernandez also is substituted by Romulo Mamaril, who gave quality minutes in that first encounter against Great Taste. Here is Rambo against Ramos. What a great matchup, although Ramos is giving away about three inches in height to Vic Sanchez. De La Cruz working his way inside the paint. The finger roll didn't work that time, and Philip says that was the right place at the right time to clear the board. Michael Young extricates himself and makes it. Miraculous shot there yes. taken by the Houston Rifleman. I agree. 51-37. The coffee makers once again in the middle of a rampage. And the rum makers have to clean up their ranks very soon. We're six and a half minutes away from the halftime break. Rambo against Ramos. The turnaround. De La Cruz gets an offensive foul. Ball away from the ball. Yes. You know the 14 point lead, Great Taste. Mainly build that up with their uh, rebound, John. They get the rebounds and then they can go to the fast break point. Something that was lacking in that first encounter. Earlier you caught a fleeting shot there of Turing Valenzuela. The karate expert who doubles as a coach. Or is it the other way around? All right, here is Bernie Fabiosa. They're really looking for Alan Kaidek. He throws up another three-point shot. It won't go this time. Amarilla, the human pinball. What did you expect? Didn't even bother to jump to get that rebound. Freddy Baldi gets a screen from Rambo, and it doesn't, it doesn't fall. You can do that. Right. 51 37. Michael Young has been rebounding very well for Great Taste Coffee. That's one department where he outscored Sergil rebound. And Rambo reaches for the sky to acknowledge the foul. We've got a timeout. Oh, we're getting some real fantastic shots from our director, Ramon Romano. Again, my hat's off to you, Mr. Romano. And you just got a fair idea of the big turnout here with the Ultra, notwithstanding the heavy downpours we've been having all day today. You know, for a while, Joe, I thought we were at the forum with that shot. Beautiful shot. Are you kidding? That better, better than the forum. <laughs> Who wants the forum? You can keep the forum. 51-37 is the oh. count. 14 point lead for great days. Okay, foul. An intentional foul. Deliberate foul will be called on Vic Sanchez. Actually, Vic Sanchez came into the ball game to try to check the hat shooting Alan Kaidik. Well, let's see that slow mo there. Okay, watch the left knee. Wow. Well, one way of stopping your man. <laughs> well, Rambo knows all the tricks in the book and then some. So you better watch out for him when he starts marking you. 52-37, 15-point lead now for the coffee makers. We're a shade under the halfway point of the second quarter. 20 points already for Alan yes. Kaidik. Can you He's really that? back with a vengeance, huh? You bet. 21. And we have 5 minutes and 46 seconds remaining yet in the second quarter. 14 points for Tandua against only 2 for great pace. Here comes David Thurgill. Look at that clogged up lane. Oh, Despite great outside fall away yes. by Thurgill. Michael Young quickly on the opposite end of the floor. Good motion offense being displayed here by the Great Taste Coffee Makers, but Michael Young misses from the corner. Ball falling right to the hands of Ito Yasquera. A fresh infusion into the ball game during the last time out by Turing Valenzona. Here is Onchi de la Cruz. So that's the backward tandem now for Tantuai. Onchi de la Cruz running the point, and Ito Yasquera playing off guard. And David Thurkill against Ramos makes his move now. Oh, you don't give him that first step. Because okay. once you give him that first step, you don't even have to look. You can just yes. chuck it up as two points for David. And Coach Turing Valenzona realizes that he has to play more rugged basketball. He's got his three enforcers in there, Esguerra, De La Cruz, and Vic Sanchez. 12-point lead going for great pace. 
A mild rally was sparked early by the Pantoy Rob Makers, which cut down the Great Pace advantage to just eight points, but the Great Pace coffee makers woke up in time. Now they still have a 12-point lead going for them. Kaidik wants to make it sweeter, but he just lost his hot hand. Here comes Thurgill. Uh, let's watch David Thurgill. He was confronted there by Michael Young. He goes to Ito Izquierda. His outside shot has gone sour, too. And there's the outlet pass to Alan Kaidik. Alan immediately draws a double team. He scores to cap out. Tandoi defense is quickly falling into place. Averting another fast break here by the rum makers. But the copy makers, I should have said, and that was another case of miscommunication. De La Cruz tried to give it to Rambo. Turkill dropped it to Ito Izquierda. They, all of a sudden, they all got gun shy. Yes. 53-43, just a 10-point lead now. That's why once again, threatening to break through that double-digit deficit. Exactly four minutes to go in the first semester of this ball game. Here is Alan Kaidik. Suicidal drive inside. He also has that in his bag of tricks. You know, it's so nice to see Alan drive down the middle. Even if there are two or three guards, he'll still squeeze himself inside. That's though. right. He shows extreme versatility and presence of mind. When his outside shooting went sour, he started going for the higher percentage shots. Another unproductive thrust here by Dantuai. 55-43. You notice how the rum makers are not really getting any second cracks at that basket. And here's Young. He didn't need a second crack. But Great Day gets going. Forget it. Okay, better collision here between the Phantom Jet and an MIG. Philip Cesar was called for his second personal. Fabiosa is substituted by Ricky Brown. As Guerra sits down, Freddy comes back in. And we'll try to take advantage of this lull to issue this good news for music lovers. Watch out for Gloria Estefan and the Miami Sound Machine on June 27 and 28 at the Book Arts Theater, 7.30 p.m. Gloria Estefan and the Miami Sound Machine, a live concert brought to you by the Pigai Pagmamahal Foundation of Makati. You like Gloria Estefan? You bet. Okay. Name me one of her songs. Okay, 3.18 to go before the halftime break. 57.45. Doesn't point advantage for Great Taste. It is a high-scoring affair. It's got run to the first game, which saw Ginebra San Miguel finally break that voodoo spell cast on them by the Magnolia Ice Cream Makers, leveling the series at one all in their own battle for third place. Four seconds to go in the shot clock. Ricky Brown is forced to put it up. Yes, gloriously. 59.45. Coffee makers keeping the rum makers at bay with a very commanding lead. And here's Monty de la Cruz. He's been oh. playing a hero's role so far for Tantwai. And he ran smack into Ricky Brown yeah. in that penetration. Let's catch that in slow mo. Right, right smack in the face of Monty de la Cruz. Watch that. Watch Ricky Brown. Boom. And we've got a timeout. We'll be back. The smoke continues to hang thick on the battlefield. That's Mamaril coming up with a great follow up shot for Tantwai to chop down the Great Days lead to a dozen points. You want to have to go in the first half. In case you're getting tired of our voices, that is Walkie Trillios and mine, you could probably turn down the volume of your television set and listen to our radio coverage. That's on 738 AM. And you can hear a very, very fine and promising commentator in the person of Chef Salmeda. Oh, Rambo! Rambo! Nice reverse shot by Sanchez. Pick that up slow mo for you. Because there was Ramos there. Watch. That was Ala Julius Irving. The shot will count. And a chance for a three point play. Notice him sporting a brand new hairdo. Makes him look like Prince Valiant. <laughs> and Arnie Torres checks right back into the ball game and plays of Ramos. Going back to the radio coverage I was talking about, we have no less as a special guest on the panel the hard hitting popular sports columnist Al Mendoza with Seb Samenta. 59-49. A big offensive rebound for Tantuai. No coffee makers went for that rebound. David Turkill preparing to make his move against Michael Young, who's all alert. Oh, oh, very quick hands by Michael Young. He gets the outlet pitch, and he puts it in for an easy bucket. Boy, was David Turkill read the face that time. Oh, he certainly was upstaged by Michael Young in that particular bit of action. 61-49, back to a dozen point lead for Great Pace. Inside pass to Rambo. And Arnie Twadlis, it's his turn to foul Rambo. Second personal foul for Arnie Twadlis. Okay, 
Another opportunity for us to sneak in here. A word this time for Adidas, the official outfitter of the PPA. Time left, a minute and 35. We're still in the first half. You know, that's what they think. Defense of great pace is working very well for them. And uh, they've done it so well that the young squad left Cesar Brown all have two fouls apiece. Nobody really in foul trouble here, Joe. So you see that helping out defense. That they give up. They've been giving up two fouls apiece, so that's okay. That's working so effectively for them. Ricky Brown against Jose de la Cruz. What else is new here is Arnie Tuadles and Ovalde. Trying to prevent him from getting any shooting room. He tries a baby hook. Oh, I like the way you say a baby hook. And Tuadles and Sanchez are getting physical now. Well, there's no love lost between these two guys. The drive by Sanchez. And he is nettled by the fact that no whistle blew in that piece of action. And it consummates in another transfer conversion by Great Pace. 63.50, Baker doesn't lead for the coffee makers. 55 kicks to go before both clubs and players with longer room for the halftime break. Nobody okay. marked Romulo Mamaril. Yes, there was no switch off there. Phillips tried to get that ball, but no coffee maker uh, switched off. Arnie Fuentes against Freddy Ubaldi. Philip Cesar against Romulo Mamaril. Inside pass by Alan Cadiz to Ricky Brown. Oh, great drop to Arnie Fuentes. What an unselfish move by Ricky Brown. That's right, Joe. When you have good players, good shooters that want to assist one another, then you're finished. Oh, every individual coffee maker on the floor is acting like a team player tonight. Right, okay. Finally, a warning will be given the coffee makers for illegal defense. Yes, a warning for illegal defense. They've been doing it so well so far in the ball game. Or is it a technical foul? Oh, yes. It is a oh, technical foul right, because we're in right. the last 25 seconds of the first quarter. Right. So right. it's an automatic uh, technical, regardless of whether a warning had already been uh -huh. issued on them earlier. And the designated hitter is, of course, Freddie Ubaldi. Who else? Grisel Vetterer, winner of the 1977 MVP award. And uh, before that, uh, also an NCAA MVP when he was playing for the Mapua Cardinals. 18 seconds to go, still a 12-point lead for Great Pace. The Coffee Makers would like nothing better than to go into the dugout for the halftime break with a double-digit advantage. Punches. Romulo Mamarin. And look at Philip Cesar. Tie him up! That's Boy, right, that's forcing him to a health hold. The elongated arms of Philip Cesar once again weaving miracles. He did that to Mon Fernandez. I remember about two, three games back. Now on Romulo Mamarin. You know, this guy has arms so long, he can tie his shoelaces without bending his knees. <laughs> I think I've said that before. Twelve seconds to go. Great Pace can still give up one foul. Sanchez throws a beat on the basket. From the corner, in and out. Third kill for the follow-up. 65-55, and it's zero hour for the first half. 65-55, ten-point lead for Great Pace. This is shaping up to be another cliffhanger, so you don't dare budge from your seats as we bring you some very, very friendly and well-produced.